Cut. 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 Hornbills are a kind of bird named after the horn-like bill found on most of the species. There are 54 species of hornbills worldwide. 23 species living in the savannas and forests of Africa and 31 species in Asia. Hornbills are, therefore, found only in the Old World. Bhutan has four species of hornbills. The Great Hornbill, Rufo's Naked Hornbill, Red Hornbill, and the Oriental White Hornbill. Of the four, two species are found in Jigme Singe Wangchuk National Park, the Great Hornbill, Buceros bicornis, and the Rufo's Naked Hornbill, Aceros nipilinesis. Many hornbills are endangered or threatened as a result of deforestation, loss of habitat and hunting for their bills, for their feathers and also for meat. The Rufo's naked hornbill and the great hornbill are both of great conservation significance. The Rufo's naked hornbill is listed under vulnerable category of IUCN red list in appendix 1 of CITES and similarly great hornbill is listed under Near threatened category of IUCN red list in Appendix 1 of CITES. For Chikmissing Yongshu National Park, Hornbill have been a focus species of conservation and we have put substantial amount into Hornbill conservation. During the past years, we have carried out basic research activities such as identification of nesting sites, assessment of habitat status, and feeding and nesting behaviors, mainly of Rufo's snake hornbill. In this phase, we have gone one step ahead and carried out more detailed survey studies that includes both the hornbill species found in this national park. The next activity in line is to conduct publication survey of hornbills in this coming financial year. The life cycle of hornbills is a story of rare and undying love. There is also the story of ultimate commitment and dedication. The female bird engages herself inside the nest, sealing her world from the rest of the world except for a narrow slit through which food is delivered for her and their upcoming chicks and the races are disposed out. The slit is about a half inch wide, wide enough to pass food through, but narrow enough to seal out potential predators. Uh, hornbills are usually monogamous. The copulation takes place uh, from the last week of nest building for both the species, that is Rufous snake and great hornbill in Bhutan. The nesting and feeding behaviors are quite similar and they compete for nest. In our observation this year, 2017, the nest that was previously used by great hornbill was taken over by rufous snake hornbill this year. The male in the world of sight, commits to never pay his duty of delivering food for his mate and offspring and keep possible intruders away.
rain or heat, storm or thunder, it never stops delivering the best of feeds for them. In case any misfortune happens to him, often the whole family perishes. However, sometimes the female breaks the seal and comes out to find food. Hornbills primarily feed on fruit, sticks and insects. Great hornbill and rufous necked hornbill are predominantly frugivorous but are opportunist and will prey on small mammals, reptiles and small birds. They live in small groups that roost communally. As a rule, hornbills don't drink. They get all the water need from their food. Dichi ngachigi tatok tang isibeoda jago digi Kore Pugulu, Karzegi Rik, Shingi, Domagi Masebar, Ja Chugusogi, Jituya Jinsa Toni, Sesuni E. Digia Mase, Kogi, Awalang, Inkina Juachin, Bittel, Dele Bebkankur, the Inkina Bewachin, Krebs, Suya, Jinsa Toni, Sesuni E. Hornbills are important for seed dispersal and help spread the food they eat, which is why they are often referred to as the farmers of forests. When hornbill chicks are matured enough to leave the nest, their voice changes and parents respond by not bringing food. This encourages the chicks to break out of their wild nest. They break a hole in the wild first and poke their head out and scan the outside world for the first time. It often takes a couple of days for it to get enough courage to leave. To leave. During our field observation this year, the cheek of rufous necked hornbill observed the environment for two and a half days before leaving the nest. Similarly, the cheeks of great hornbill observed the environment for three days before leaving their nest. When the cheeks are ready to fly, the breakthrough wall while its parents squawk loudly in encouragement. Sometimes getting out of the nest takes some effort because the cheeks have grown quite large. In such case, the cheek ejects one wing out first and pop out and land on branch. Later, with more encouragement from his parents, they learn to fly.
fledgling of uh, chicks of Great Hornbill was on uh, 1st August 2017, which is approximately 90 to 97 days of breeding cycle. And similarly, the fledgling of chicks of Rufus necked Hornbill was on 9th August 2017, which is approximately 95 to 100 days of breeding cycle. Getting out of the sealed nest is not the end of the story. There are many more challenges to unfold. The first task is to master the art of flight. This the chick has to learn as soon as possible for there are many predators in its new world. Usually, the parents take active role in getting the chick on its own wings. They tempt the young ones to fly by refusing to give easy feed and making it do its part in acquiring the food in the bill of parent. After repeated attempts to snatch easy food from parent's bill, it makes its move and eventually learns to fly great distances and great heights. However, not everyone is so lucky. Sometimes the cheek is on its own right from the day one in the new world. This male chick of Rufo's naked hornbill, who took its first flight on 9th August 2017 at Nabe under Jigmi Singe Wangchuk National Park, had no one to pick him up when his first ever flight landed. In fact, he was forced to leave the nest because his parents did not show up for two days, leaving him at mercy of hunger and fear of attack by predators. Despite rain, he took courage to take to his wings and land safely on a tree branch by roadside. He waited there for one and a half days for his parents to return and guide him, but only to find out that they would not come back for him. Then he takes short flights from tree to tree around the nest area and tries to find something to eat, but finds nothing. Pained by the feeling of being left out, scared by the fear of enemies, but also driven by the force of hunger and instinct to fight for survival, he has to venture into the vastness of the wilderness ahead. He gives a final look at the vast wild world ahead of him, takes a great leap and spread his young wings. Uh, we have over 6,000 people living within the park and most of these people are uneducated rural people. We carry out lots of uh, conservation works, we conduct researches on different uh, species and we even uh, publish reports and scientific papers. But these are not uh, understood by our people. Therefore, what I feel is that uh, in order to integrate uh, rural people into the field of conservation, uh, the most effective method is to, to, to spread the awareness uh, through some kind of uh, audiovisual means. And this is one of our first uh, efforts to achieve this. We are creating a short documentary film, uh, which uh, although it's not uh, very professional, uh, we'd like to, in the near future, we'd like to uh, create uh, more of such uh, uh, videos, uh, uh, documentary films in more professional way and uh, uh, 
translate this into local dialects and uh, screen to our people so that they become more aware of uh, conservation efforts we put in uh, we also would like to include uh, those uh, rural people in the film so that they get more encouraged and uh, come forward for uh, conservation